Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the La Croissant Award Sabbath Supplement for Sunday, August 30th. Uh, it's great to be here with you virtually today. Uh, we've got a few announcements that we'd like to start off with. First, we regret to inform all of you of the passing of a longtime member of the La Crescenta Stake, Ted Valentine. Uh, he passed on August 25th. His digital memorial is available via an email link, which was sent to the ward by Jeff Young. If you didn't receive that or missed it, uh, you can contact Jeff directly or a member of the bishopric to have that forwarded to you. Um, for all youth parents and youth leaders, our Stake Standards Night will be held on September the 13th at 7 p.m. Uh, we look forward to hearing messages from our Stake Presidency that are pertinent to our youth, especially in um, light of the, the changes that have happened this school year. So we look forward and encourage everyone to attend that September 13th at 7 p.m. And finally, we have um, some revised rules for our missionaries. We're happy to report that our sister missionaries now have the ability to meet with um, us in our homes, both indoor and outdoors, although the outdoor um, distance meetings are encouraged. So um, if you'd like to, uh, you're, you're able to invite the sisters to come over to your home to share a message, to, to pray with you, to get to know you. We have two wonderful new sister missionaries. They're, they're absolutely lovely and uh, I encourage you to get to know them um, and, and have contact with them. Um, however, the mission president and the stake president would like to make it clear that there is no pressure at all to invite the sisters into your home. In fact, if you are in an at-risk category, they would discourage you from inviting them into your home physically and to meet with them um, virtually via technology. Um, the other part of that announcement is that the sisters are also able to have meals in the homes of our members. So um, these are available only on weekends and only before 5 p.m. So if Saturday and Sunday afternoon you'd like to invite the sisters over, they are available and can um, come and, and eat. Again, we encourage you to do this uh, in an outdoor setting where possible in order to mis minimize risk and to allow um, distancing to be more comfortable. So uh, we're excited to have our, our new sister missionaries and we look forward to being able to get to know them personally. Um, so I will be our speaker today. Um, <clears throat> I hope that you are all doing well. I, I cannot believe how long it's been that we've been unable to meet as a ward family. Um, recently in a bishopric meeting, Brother Harvey suggested that I be the speaker for today and uh, commented that it had been months since I, I had spoken to members of the ward um, formally. And that really hit home with me and I realized um, how long it's been. Uh, things have been really, really busy and um, you know, I just kind of put my shoulder to the wheel and have been pushing through and, and hadn't really realized um, how much time has, has gone by and how long it's been. So um, I, I'm grateful for this opportunity to share some thoughts with you today and um, want to express my love and concern. Um, the the ward and, and all of you individually are in my prayers frequently. I pray that you are doing well and that even though we are distanced um, physically that you can feel that we are still together spiritually. Um, recently I, I had uh, the opportunity to attend a sacrament meeting in Orem with Jake. Uh, I, I took him up to school and um, in his ward they were able to have uh, distanced meetings similar to the meetings that were held in the uh, Glendale single adults and young single adult ward for just a couple of weeks prior to the, the restrictions changing in California. Um, so I just wanted to share a message of hope that uh, I, I, I felt very hopeful when I attended this meeting. 
Um, they were under distancing requirements. Everyone had to wear masks. They had to sit six feet apart. Uh, every other row, the sacrament is passed a little bit differently. The meeting is abbreviated. There, there's just one speaker. It's about a 45 minute meeting and maximum of 100 individuals. And that is really kind of the plan that's being put forth for um, our wards as well, as soon as we're able to begin to, to meet indoors. Um, so, but that those, those approvals are in place and as soon as um, there's a, a, a window of opportunity for us to, to be able to meet together, we will. Um, we are hopeful that we'll be able to meet together in the near future and, and look forward to that time. Um, during this, this time that we're all apart from one another, um, life feels so different than it used to. Uh, in so many ways, um, and I think as Sister Taylor mentioned in her talk, um, it has forced the majority of us to look inward. Um, this is a common theme that we hear, not just from members of the church, but all over the place, of people concentrating on what's most important and on looking inside themselves and considering um, what life really means to them. Um, as I've been thinking about those topics and um, counseling with members of the ward and praying and pondering this situation. Um, I have felt direction and, and guidance. Um, and there was a, a, a particular passage of the scriptures that illustrated some of the feelings that I've had. And, and I'd like to share that with you today. And that, that will be the focus of my remarks. Um, that comes from Second Chronicles chapter 34. And uh, this passage begins as we're introduced to a young king named Josiah. Um, at only eight years old, he inherited a, a reign of wickedness. Um, Judah, for the, the prior two generations, had turned away from the Lord and done evil in his sight. They had abandoned the commandments and forgotten their covenants. Their community around them had changed and they were struggling. There was great dis despair and misery. There, I would imagine, would have been much uh, of unhappiness and, and pain. Um, as Josiah grew, the scriptures tell us when he was 16 years old, he began to purge the land of the wickedness and idolatry that had persisted um, under the, the two prior kings. Um, he, the scriptures say that, that he walked in uprightness as did his father David. He sought to be a, a righteous king. He wanted to live according to God's laws. And as he strived to do that, um, his heart was led in the right direction. So we see that he began in righteousness. He then began, um, years later, um, sought to, to cleanse the land of, of wickedness. Um, but I would imagine that during this time, he, he felt a little bit alone and that this would have been a difficult task. After so many years of, of so much idolatry and so much wickedness, I'm sure people didn't respond well to this push for reform and change. Um, it was uncomfortable, it was different, it was not what they were accustomed to. Um, the chapter goes on and, and tells us that at 26 years old, King Josiah collected tithes of those who still believed in, in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that with those tithes, he called Hilkiah the high priest and asked him to repair the Lord's house. Hilkiah went into the temple, and um, with these funds that had been consecrated, he began to repair the temple that had been defiled. Uh, over many years, um, it had been used for pagan worship, and it was no longer uh, the sanctified house of the Lord. Uh, the scriptures say that there were breaches in the walls or holes in the temple. It, it, it had been um, in disrepair and not cared for. So Hilkiah the high priest began to repair the holes in the wall and um, 
from that prior purge when um, Josiah was 16, all of the, the pagan and um, idol uh, emblems had been removed from the temple. So they began to, to cleanse it and repair it and to seek to make it whole. And as they did that, um, in Second Chronicles 34, 14, it says that um, Hilkiah the priest found within the walls of the temple the book of the law, the law that had been given by Moses. Um, Hilkiah ran to Josiah and read before him the words of the law. Josiah was so excited by hearing the words of the, the law um, that his, his heart leapt within him. Um, it's an interesting note that uh, this, this lost treasure that he found um, had been buried inside the walls of the temple. It's a, it was a, a tradition to place the Torah scrolls within the, the walls of the temple as a symbol. This was a, a, an emblem of the people's covenant with God, similar to the wearing of phylacteries or the placing of a mezuzah near the, the doorway of um, faithful Israelites. So this was, this was meant to be something that connected this holy place with God's law. And it, it, um, it had that that intended uh, and desired effect on Josiah. Um, he heard the law, which was uh, read to him, and he rejoiced, and he immediately called for the leaders of Israel, and he had them hear the words of the law. They accepted the words of the law, and they rejoiced together. He then called for uh, a cleansing and um, urged these people to become worthy of the blessings that were promised in the law. Uh, they then gathered together all of Israel, and it says that he, he stood on the doorsteps of the temple uh, near the posts, and he, he extended this covenant to all of his people, and they renewed their relationship with God. So, back to Josiah and um, finding this law deep within the walls of the temple. As I've thought about what's happening in the world around us and all those who feel alone and disconnected, all of those who are struggling and suffering, um, I've thought about this need to look deep within, uh, within our walls and, and to find what we have constructed within ourselves. Um, I've turned within myself during this period. Um, and as I've done so, I have found some damage that I'm trying to repair. I've found some junk that was stuffed deep in the corners that I didn't um, know was still around. Um, but I found that I have had the law written in my heart and I have rejoiced in my relationship with my Savior and I have sought to feel his love in my life. And um, that has been the, the foundation of my ability to get through this difficult period. As I contemplated that, I realized that just as Josiah, when he let the law into his heart, he turned to others and sought to share that joy and to lift them up through the, the great words of salvation that he found, um, I felt a need to share this with you, with our Ward family. Um, I want you to know that as you remodel yourself, as you repair the walls of yourself um, during this time of, of, of isolation and of change, if you can bring out the law of the Lord and make it a stronger part of your life, you will feel blessed and you'll have the ability to get through um, these changes. These changes, I honestly believe, can be positive. I think there's going to be a lot of growth, uh, especially in our younger generation, that come from um, this removal of so many things that are so trivial, of this return to family and self and balance and um, activities that, that promote um, 
self-awareness and satisfaction. Um, it's, it's very difficult to make these changes. It's hard, uh, especially for those that are very social, to not have the ability to see friends and connect with others. Um, but God is there for us and he loves us. Uh, he wants you to love and know yourself. And I know that we can do that. I know that as we um, allow the atonement to heal us, to repair our walls, um, that we'll feel happy that we'll feel content, that we will no longer be afraid and alone because we will know that the Savior is with us and that there are those who love us surrounding us. Um, as Josiah um, then extended his circle from his immediate uh, leadership and those that were close to him and then called all of his friends and neighbors, all of Israel to come and partake of this joy that he found in his life, I honestly believe that um, we can do the same thing in our community, that we can be an, an, uh, an agent for change. If we have the love of Jesus Christ in our hearts and we spread it throughout our community, we can help to, to stop all of this pain and discontent, all of the frustration and fear and anger, the hatred that we're seeing within our own community. Um, it saddens me greatly to see people treating sons and daughters of God in, in such disrespect and, and with such little regard. It, it's tragic. Um, there, there's great room for love and, and understanding and compassion on, on both sides of any issue, of any disagreement. Um, I pray that we can bring healing to to our area, to our world. Um, I pray that we can have the law of the Lord in our hearts and that we can share that with others that we have contact with, just as Josiah did, that we can help to rejoice in the word of God and to know that it is mighty to change our hearts, that it can bring us happiness and peace. It doesn't matter if we're locked in the lion's den. It doesn't matter if we're imprisoned. It doesn't matter what's happening. If we have the Savior to be with us, it will be enough. I pray that each one of you will receive that witness, that you will find the strength that I have found within the law. I pray that you will share that with others. And I pray that within our ward, um, we can find ways to continue to reach out, communicate to one another, to serve one another, and to love one another in spite of these uh, distance requirements that we're currently under. Um, I know that things are, are unknown still at this time, and that's difficult, and it's frustrating. Um, but as we learn from Lehi's vision. Uh, at times when we're holding on to the iron rod, we can't see what's happening around us. Sometimes we find ourselves in darkness. And I know that we are in a period of darkness right now. Don't let go of the iron rod. Hold on. I know that the Savior wants to, to minister to you. I pray that you will minister to others. I, I hope that you know that we are here for you, that we love you, and that we would love to connect with you. Um, we're holding Temple Recommend interviews every Tuesday that alternates between Brother Taylor and Brother Harvey. Um, I'm conducting interviews Tuesdays and Sundays. Um, the members of the Ward Council are available, the Elders Quorum, the Relief Society. There are many people who would love to connect with you. If you feel alone, if you are down, please reach out to someone, anyone, whoever you feel most comfortable connecting with. Um, we would love to be there for you. We would love to chat with you. We would love to share a, a prayer, a, a, a word of encouragement, and um, let you know that we feel the love of the law in our hearts and, and to share that strength with you. I know that Heavenly Father is mindful of us. I know that we will find happiness as we turn our hearts to him. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.